This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Team. So Ryan, I'm kind of addicted to packets. I've, I've got to have them like everywhere. And, and when I get no route to host, I get really grumpy. So what can I do about that? Well, we have uh, through Inmarsat and through our carriers is a uh, what's called a portable broadband unit or a BGAN terminal. Uh, you can point them to any, or you point them to the south if you're on the northern hemisphere or to the north if you're on the southern. Uh, they use three geostationary global satellites. And so this isn't the Iridium stuff that, that like I was familiar with back in the 90s, you could make a sat phone call, right? No, no, these are Inmarsat, they're, so they're, uh, their focus is mainly broadband communications. And when you say broadband, what, what are you talking about uh, as far as data throughput? Uh, close to about half a meg up and down. Half a megabit. Half yeah. a megabit per, per second, yes. Um, and so what do I need to, to you know, shoot a bird in the sky and get half a megabit down? Well, you would use something like this terminal here. This is the Hughes 9202. Hughes just came out with this. It's a class two terminal, so you're doing about 496 kilobits per second. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, so it's really all you need other than the device that you're gonna connect to with it. So it is a router, and so you just point it up and that, so literally pointing it in the sky is like connecting to the WAN. Yes. And yes, everything absolutely. else is the same otherwise. Everything else is the same otherwise. And yeah. it's like you get an IP4 address to the internet and everything? Yep. Uh, so you mentioned that this is a class two device. What, do you, what does that mean to me? Uh, class two is, it's uh, transmits power. So you range from, uh, on these types of units, you go from a class three, which is the lowest transmit speed you're doing about 396 kilobits per second, all the way up to a class one terminal, which is 492. So 492 kilobits per second, second. is really where it caps out. Is where it caps out on on uh, BGAN terminals, yes. Okay, and so there's also like link quality that must go into effect as far as like the atmosphere is concerned, yes? No, uh, this will cut through any type of cloud cover, any type of... Uh, oh, really? Unless you're like really, really extreme snow cover, which you're going to be sitting outside with it anyway, so... <laughs> right, because this is line of sight. Like, this guy needs to be mounted on my roof and pointed in a certain direction. How do I know? Is there, like, a calculator or something? How do I know, like, based on where I am in the world, where I need to point this? So, it does a GPS lock, so it picks up where it needs to point, where you need to point it. And then it also gives you a, a signal indicator on the screen here. Okay. Um, and you point it to where the number gets the highest. You're generally going to get about... On the uh, regional beam, you're going to get in the 40s, so as high in, in the 40s that you can get. Once you get it pointed, you tell it to register with the network, and it's going to jump your signal up to about 55 dBs. And once it's registered, you're ready to go. Now, how does, how does this work? How do I go about actually getting on the satellite internet uh, through a BGAN terminal to these Inmarsat satellites? Um, and where can I get access to them? Uh, you can get them access. You can get access to the satellites global, as as long as you're roughly about what is it, uh, 60 longitude or, or north or south mm -hmm. uh, latitude. Sorry, north or south. So you know if you're up north of Anchorage, Alaska, the satellite's going to be down below the horizon. So you're you're just not going to get line of sight at that point. But anywhere in between, anywhere in the world in between, you've you've got. So if, in, to it. if I'm in Peru. It's mm -hmm. going to be really easy to hit. Oh, this. yeah, you're going to take this and point it straight up like that, and you're going to get signal. So <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And so, and, and, and it's not just in North America, right? No, it's, it's worldwide. Cool. And uh, so how do you go ahead and get registered and buy, you know, how, do, how does it work as far as, like, uh, subscribing and minutes and megabytes and however else that, that works? Uh, you know, it, do I buy it through Inmarsat? Do I buy my equipment from them? How does it work? You buy your equipment and your airtime through distribution partners like us, Oceans. Um, we can sell the equipment, we can sell the airtime, we sell uh, after sales support, so if you need help pointing it or using the device, or any app, any type of application afterwards. You know, let's say we've had some people that wanted to run a, a mobile office behind the terminal, and we would walk them through, okay, well, you need to pick up a a uh, another wireless access point you know if you're really wanting to do VoIP we've got a VoIP box that you can put behind it that compresses the data and makes it real small so you can you can actually do VoIP traffic and, uh, effectively 
Um, but yeah, you would just go through distribution partners. And so you guys are also a distribution partner, so kind of give me a ballpark of, uh, you know, in terms of data and, and cost and whatnot, how does that break down? Do you, you know, buy like a chunk of gigabytes or, or what? Is it, like, is it like a cellular plan where it's like, oh, you know, I get five gigs a month on this, uh, you know, EVDO or CDMA or GSM, uh, you know, G, uh, GPRS or whatever? Yeah, it's, you've got prepaid and postpaid plans. On your, pre, on your postpaid plan, you're paying a monthly cost to keep the service active. And you're paying roughly about six and a half dollars a meg. Six and a half dollars a what? A meg. A megabyte. Yeah. Okay, wow. So, what can you do with a six and a half dollar meg? That's the most expensive megabyte I've ever heard of. <laughs> well, you do keep in mind it's it's a satellite connection, which means you can do anywhere off the grid. Sure, sure. And I guess if I'm using like uh, Telnet or SSH with like a Lynx browser, I could, you know, get Twitter messages out, no problem. Sure. Or you can go through something like uh, our XWeb service, which so uh, XWeb is a... Uh, you, you register with a proxy, and it takes your uh, browsing traffic, compresses it, makes it as small as possible, and then... Right. Of course, you wouldn't want to use images or anything like that either. You, you can. It w it'll resize the images and make them uh, compress the images. That's really where you're going to get most of your compression is on the images in any way. Yeah, I'd be so. turning off JavaScript and images yeah. all together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, literally, <laughs> I'd be using links. Yes. <laughs> Cool. Well, it sounds pretty fantastic. I can't wait to, to learn more about it, but uh, kind of give me an idea of like, so you said this, this is a class two mm -hmm. and there are other class devices. Do you have those here? Correct. Uh, we have a class three. So this, so would this be is your... the, the slowest class. Right. Class it's, three. So this is your entry level unit. Uh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi built in. It it's work, functions on the same premise as the other ones. Mm -hmm. But you have to do a direct connect to it, so you've got your oh. RJ45 Ethernet. Ethernet, hooray. That's and then uh, RJ11 for phone. You literally just plug in like a, like you can a plug Radio Shack phone in. Yeah, any you standard get POTS tone? phone. Oh, yeah. You get dial tone. Oh, yeah, you'll get satellite. That's fantastic. And it's actually any of these terminals that do voice and data concurrently. Oh, cool. So you actually get a phone number with it? Mm hmm. Yeah, cool. it's, uh, international. Earth. <laughs> Area code in Mersat, actually. Oh, cool. That's pretty <laughs> fantastic. And, and then it just powers off of 12 volts down here so it, you could run it off the solar rig or whatever? Yeah, it'll actually charge the internal battery. So these actually do have an oh, internal battery. These have internal. All. Sweet. How long do they last? Uh, standby time, I want to say, is about... Oh, what do you say, Matt? Eight, eight hours standby? What was the question? Uh, standby time on the batteries? Uh, yeah, six to eight hours. Yeah, I mean, if you're just using it to check your mail anyway, how long does it take you? You know, you, you connect, download your mail, mm -hmm. disconnect, and craft then, your replies, yep. connect back up and sync. Yep. Yeah. And so what, what class is this guy here? This guy's a class one terminal. Okay. Um, this is probably going to be the most expensive terminal you would see. Um, and what makes him special other than the fact that he's class one, so he does the 400 and... 492, 492 kilobits. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the other things on this one is... If you were running, wanting to run a mobile office, and you know, do uh, do a lot of stuff off the grid, this would be the terminal you'd want to do. Uh, it comes with two cables. Uh, Is that just an SMA cable? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All and right. It comes with a, a 20 meter that you can do as well, so you can take so this and set it outside. So mount this on the roof permanently. Uh -huh. Well, I wouldn't do permanently because again, you got to point it south. Okay, so I'd put it on a lazy susan or something. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you would mount this outside, then you'd put the base unit inside somewhere, like in your tent or in your vehicle or what have you. Um, it's got Wi-Fi built in, it's got Bluetooth built in, you've got USB connect to it, you've got DC out, you've got phone and fax, two LAN, and two ISDN. ISDN, really? Yeah. Well, that's great for radio, too. Uh -huh. Huh. That's really cool. So. Um, given that, uh, you know, the, the, the megabytes or whatever range in the six and a half, seven dollar area, what about the equipment cost? Equipment cost, you're going to run anywhere from, what's, uh, about six, six and a half? Dollars. Yeah, six thousand for, for this unit all the way down to the class threes. That one we've got is a used unit that we're selling for a thousand dollars. Okay. So, that's ballpark. Cool. I'm really excited about learning more about this because I just love the idea about uh, getting connected no matter where, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, not a problem. Cheers. Wanted to take a quick moment to thank a sponsor that is totally making Hack Across America possible, Ting. You guys have heard me talk about them in the past. 
They are the mobile operator that is just changing the landscape because they're empowering customers. No longer are you helpless with some contracts and some convoluted fees and all of these penalties and stuff. No, you actually just pay for what you use. It is so great. These guys up in Canada, they're true geeks and they came up with this revolutionary, I, I love this. It's awesome, it's honest. That's what it is. It's megabytes, minutes, and text messages all build separately. So if you use too much, well, you know, you can't use too much. You just build the appropriate amounts. And if you use less than you thought you would, it's totally cool because you're credited the difference. I love these guys. In fact, I'm a Ting fanatic. I have this phone on Ting dedicated to updating the van map. So if you go to hackacrossamerica.com, you can always see where I'm traveling. If you want, you can text me. My Ting number's out there. You can find it on the video blog because I am, I love that, you know, you guys just, Text me, call me, give me great ideas. So thank you, Tank, for that as well. And of course, the video blogs that I've been posting of all of the crazy hijinks along the way, I just use, again, my Tang phone, I point it at myself, I upload it right there, and uh, and I love this, because here's, here's a perfect example. You know, I've been with a bunch of other carriers, but let me tell you, none of them have dealt with this. Here we go, 7,000 megabytes this month, no problem whatsoever. I've been cut off after three gigs before, so it's really nice. I've got six devices on Ting now, and it is so affordable because I'm only paying for what I'm using, so I don't even have to really think about it. And listen, you guys can check it out too, and you can get awesome savings if you use hak5.ting.com. That's all you have to do is go over to that website, and just for being a Hack5 viewer, you know, check out their online savings calculator, compare it to what you currently have. But listen, if you like it, you're gonna get $25 off either your service or a device just by using that URL. That's H-A-K-5, hack5.ting.com. This week in the Hack Shop, we are having a special on shipping. You can head over to hackshop.com and use the coupon code SHIP6 to get $5 off the shipping price for the next week. And once again, we'd like to thank you guys. Our deepest gratitude goes out to all of you for your continued support of Hack5. Thank you so much, because really, we couldn't do it without you. I need that beer money, you know? Next up, Make sure to check out Hack Across America for trip amount announcements, events, and find out where Darren's going to be because who knows? You, to you totally want to you want to do that. That's what's up. Hi. Hey. What are you doing here? Oh, I, I just popped back because I uh, I forgot my razor. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be although <laughs> I'm going to be in Los beard. Angeles on the 25th. <laughs> on the 25th, you got it. <laughs> of June. So like, sign cool. up at hackacrossamerica.com and find Hack all the ways that you can get hacked. Got it. Sweet. Uh, across America. Okay. So where yeah. are you going next? LA. I, I don't know. I'm going to go to hell if I don't change my ways. But you guys should sign up because <laughs> it's not about where I'm going and if you're along the way. It's where you guys sign up that dictates where I'm going because I'm just connecting the dots and I'm not even supposed to be here right now. So I'm about to go crawl in my van and. Can I tell them what that cool thing is that you that huh? you have? The cool thing? The, the, I have a cool thing? Yeah, it's the thing that you give to, to people. Oh, the challenge coin. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell them about that. All right, cool. Come to so, a meetup. Yeah, come to a meetup hey, and, and you'll And if you get already have the challenge, challenge coin, coin, just a hint, uh, gate number one opened. <gasps> so, see you guys there. All right, all right. I'm, and I'm it, this isn't the bye challenge bye. coin in bye the bye. store either. Bye bye. Bye, bye Darren. All right, see ya. Go, oh, get back oh, in your van. Oh, and trust your technologist. But she's going to say some more stuff. But that. Yeah, that. So anyway, yeah, definitely check out hackacrossamerica.com for all of that information and make sure you get yourself a challenge coin because they are really, really cool and they're not the ones that we have in the store. They're like super ultra secret and you can only get them if you meet up with him on the road. It's kind of awesome. And of course, don't forget to check out all the ways that you can follow us over at hack5.org slash follow. You'll find links to all of our social networks and whatnot over there like me on Twitter. Here, and with that, I got you a rubber ducky. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What's this for? I don't know. Do you I want just me to sign it? it? No. <laughs> I, I, I would like the value of the duck to remain the same. If you sign it, it would probably be worthless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you just hurt yourself. All right. <laughs> with all of that said, that's Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. And of course, we're reminding you to trust your tech. Can I get another beer? Uh, sure. All right. Yeah. You can get another beer. Puppies? I like puppies. Puppies. You're so cute, puppy. You're so cute, puppy. Can we change it to kitties? You're so cute. I love you, kitty. I love you too, kitty. Aww. Okay.